Well, Gilbert's here. We can do the news with him next. All right. He's promoting something. I think he put out his own DVD. Uh, yeah, I heard something about this. Yeah. I'm talking to Artie about yeah. you know, how DVD sales go and it's a how funny. that whole thing works. It's real funny. We'll talk to Gilbert when we get back. Right. we got to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. The Howard Stern Show. Yay, yay, yay. All right, Gilbert Godfrey's here. He's stopping in to do the news. He's also promoting a new DVD. And CD, Gilbert Gottfried's Dirty Jokes, available in December. To pre-order, go to gilbertgottfried.com. <clears throat> now, where did this come from? Did he have a record company? No. Here's a, I'll tell you what's going on. Wow. So every time Gilbert comes in here... Wait, wait, let him get in here. Come on in. Come on in, pal. <laughs> there he is. There he is with his five bottles of water. He's getting shorter. <laughs> Gilbert. Hey, Gilbert. I see every... Gilbert, you don't have a record company. Do I have that right? Uh, image. I think it's the distribution. No? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. So here's what's going on. Uh, yes. The best I can uh -oh. do. <laughs> Every time Gilbert came in here, like Artie was talking about how successful his CD and DVD is. Uh -huh. And Artie says to Gilbert, you know, it's so great because of the show. I don't even, I just mentioned it on the show. And I sell all these DVDs on this website. It's artie-lang.com. So Gilbert here, just, I see the cash register spinning around in his eyes. Ching, ching, ching. So Gilbert goes, oh, really? Uh, you know, a lot of people have always uh, been after me to make a DVD, but, uh, you know, it was never really a good deal. Have you ever actually purchased a DVD yourself? No. No. Okay. <laughs> You don't even have a DVD player. No. Right. You've never even seen your own DVD. Did well, you see it? <laughs> I, bits and pieces. Right. Have you ever seen so it all funny. the way through? Yeah. I don't think I watched it all the way through. Okay. It's so funny because, you know, he has a website and he doesn't have a computer. So Gilbert, yeah, I know. Gilbert's, and that website is the worst thing I ever saw. I mean, the most horrible website on the planet. I wonder he's going to use that website to sell a DVD. What's on your website again? You have a picture of you with me, I think. Uh, no, no, not even. It's not even I, that. Oh, I, I've got a, I had a picture of me with Anthony Quinn. <laughs> uh, Anthony who Quinn. is that supposed to attract? Yeah. No one. <laughs> But anyway, it's the kids a lot. <laughs> so Gilbert's on, and he and he hears Artie's story, and Gilbert now his head is spinning. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. calculator's going. Oh yeah, 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 Artie. Next thing we know, <laughs> Gilbert's now got the new DVD and CD, uh -huh. and he's going to distribute it over his website. <laughs> With the, the same distributor I use. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Well, me and, Gilbert, you know, me and Gilbert have become close friends over this. Oh, really? <laughs> Does he call you? I did a, oh, over uh, last spring, I did a gig at Caroline's, and Gilbert and his lovely girlfriend showed up, and I was like, oh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> what, are you a fan of mine? <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Where did you get the tape recorders for this? I got on stage at Caroline's, and someone said, you know, Gilbert uh, came, and he wants to talk. I'm like, get out of here. He's like, I'm like, Gilbert, what are you, a fan of my comedy? He goes, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't get I, mad at me. I was always a big fan. Yeah, Gary. You know what? Gilbert's, fall, Gilbert's fallen into the trap that they all fall into. Yeah. Gilbert's website. You go to Gilbert's website. Gilbert's DVD, 1899. Autograph, 29 99 oh. Oh. Gilbert Shane. Well, I gotta go for the autograph one. That's gonna be a collector's a item. I'll never even open it. Well, it'll be worth money if I die tomorrow. And there's a good chance yes. of that. Yes. What? Uh, Twenty nine ninety nine with your autograph? Yes. <laughs> you better die tied up with a red ball trust yes. in your mouth. I don't mean to. I don't mean to cast aspersions on your career, but is anyone looking for your autograph on the CD? Or do you I am. Them? You are? I, I'll get it. You're I better get, get killed by O.J. Simpson tomorrow. Or, or you better, you know, assassinate the president. Yes. <laughs> Why the extra $10? Why about autographing all of them? Yes. <laughs> you won't do that? Is it, how many have you autographed so far in, 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 in anticipation of the demand? Oh, yes. <laughs> For $29, well, will you personalize it? It says it's limited edition. Yes, oh. limited edition. How many did you print? They, they can't get a hold of him to sign it. <laughs> kind of like those coins you buy in TV coins. <laughs> <laughs> You're using every marketing trick in the book. Exactly. So <laughs> I would think, and I don't mean this as a, a knock, <laughs> that... 
that your autograph on the DVD would, yes. would devalue it yes. rather than <laughs> increase its value. Uh, you don't mean that as a knock? No. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't understand. But you think that it's I, worth an extra 10 bucks with your name on it? I'm returning to someone wrote on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, yes. somebody must have gotten a hold of his butt and dragged him into the 21st century because I'm looking here. Gilbert's got a blog. Oh, oh no. yes. What is on the blog? I just that. threw it together yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's called F. Howard Stern. Yeah. The reason, but it's the real F word. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I say that is because this being my first blog, which hopefully people will read, it doesn't matter what I write. I can say I like cute, fluffy puppies, and someone will call Howard and say, Did you read Gilbert's blog? He told you to go F yourself. <laughs> so there, I made it easier for you. If you're planning on calling Howard about anything else, yes, I do know you personally. Yes, I was at a party with you and a boy, and oh boy, I was a jerk. So the thing is, you're anticipating negative uh, reactions. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How many DVDs and CDs did you have made in anticipation of this big release? I, you know, I don't know how many were made so far. You're not involved? No, in no. And and so now you have the website. What is the website? GilbertGodfrey.com? Yes. Okay. Nobody else wanted that name? You were able to get that easily? No, I got it from some guy in Thailand. I ended up buying it. <laughs> yeah, we had this, I know, it's always an Asian guy who somehow yeah. gets the web. Yeah, an Asian guy he, had my website. How did he know to, to go get Gilbert Gottfried if he's living in Asia? It was a terrible business move on his part. What did you pay for your own website? Do you, do you know? I, I forget how much I paid, but it was like, uh, yeah, some guy like in Thailand or Korea owned it. No, he it has... couldn't have cost much, otherwise yeah. Gilbert would not have bought it. So now you're saying the new DVD is called uh, Gilbert Gottfried's Dirty Jokes. Yes. Is it like a Jackie DVD where you tell dirty jokes? And or... you get a T-shirt that says, I stumped Gilly the Joke Man. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, when you heard how much money Artie was making, is that what really got you motivated? The, the idea that, that Artie has a career in show business. <laughs> it's like he should be the neighborhood butcher. <laughs> Like, especially talking to him on the phone. Yeah. We talk all the time. Yes. <laughs> and it's like how he's carved out a career in show. Like, well, I uh, got a DVD and the company was a distributor. And uh, so first what we had to do is uh, get the title for it. Yeah. And uh, then uh, they have to find a way to distribute it. So I'm lucky in that way. Way because I've got uh, ways to uh, promote it. And you exactly. and you are very and you Gilbert are very awkward on the phone. I imagine Artie has to fill the oh, conversation. Yes. Oh, yeah. with you get it, Howard. I'm cool. It's like he it doesn't say anything. Well, sometimes he calls me with his girlfriend on the phone, and I love that because she's very normal and speaks. But then there's times she has to leave the phone. Like, no, no, don't go. <laughs> You mean you put your girlfriend on the phone? Oh, because she's running the business. Oh, she's running no. the business. Oh, my conversation. Goodness. Is she the manager now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but she's very sweet. She knows what she's doing. Oh, my too. God. Gilbert, you're falling into every trap. So, Gilbert, in order to cut out the middleman, you're creating your own DVD. Yes. And this way, all of the money, I know that's important to you, all of the money will go right to you, no record company. Yes. Right. And your girlfriend will be in charge. Will she mail them to the people? <laughs> I mean, is that what's going on, literally? It's like my aunt will mail. Right. <laughs> so, uh, does the girlfriend get a percentage now that she's working with you? Will she get a percentage of the she DVD? Or salary. Yeah. I'm going to try to screw her out of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, Greg Giraldo, the famous comedian, uh -huh. says he knows something about you. Oh, boy. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Howard? You, you had a run-in with Gilbert, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, you had, you, you, I forget what, oh, I know what this, do you even know about this, Gilbert? Gilbert, evidently, Greg, tell me if I, I'll set this up. Okay. Greg is a comedian, he worked with Gilbert. Yes. And I'm not going to say where, let's not say where, Greg. Okay. And Gilbert is very cheap, as you know. <laughs> Gilbert will not tip a waiter. So at this comedy club, Gilbert evidently stiffed the waiter completely. You take over, Greg, what happened next? <laughs> I was I was working there the week or a couple weeks after Gilbert had been there, so it's just a story. It's just a story I heard, and uh, it, I heard it direct from the chef, the cook, the chef. I said it was a club in Jersey, and the cook said that Gilbert the night before hadn't tipped anybody, and that Gilbert was <laughs> that Gilbert was uh, was a little obnoxious.
obnoxious to him, a little cold to him. So that the next night, Gilbert ordered a steak, and the uh, and the cook, before serving it up to Gilbert, took the steak, dropped his pants and his underwear, rubbed it vigorously all over his sack and his crack, oh. <laughs> up on the plate. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. And then it, served it to Gilbert? Served it up. Direct. It had yeah. an extra tangy taste that night. <laughs> Gilbert, does that, that make that you... That special something. Will that motivate you to start tipping some of these people? See, I think... It, I, I always thought the kitchen help will pee on your food, even if you are a good tipper. So Just why bother? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in other words, knowing that the chef wiped his, his buttocks and yes. paint and balls on your steak and then cooked them out of whack. <laughs> uh, I'm sure yeah. that got edited. Wow. Go ahead, yes. he, he's definitely, uh, you know, I felt almost guilty sharing that story at first. I mean, it didn't even save him even a tiny bit. No, Gilbert doesn't. Gil, Gil, that probably happens to Gilbert every day. Well, because that's what I'm saying. He's used to that taste. Because yeah. <laughs> When Gilbert, when Gilbert goes to a restaurant that doesn't use ass on it and balls, he goes, there's something wrong. It doesn't taste right. I'm not coming back here. Or after he cooked it. He doesn't even care. Did he do it? Did, I, did, I get from you that it was before he cooked it. Yeah, I mean, it seems that way. but uh, Gilbert likes it better when the guy wipes his ass after he cooks it. It's like it's like steak sauce. If he cooks it afterward, it kills the taste. Yeah, you know, you'd think you'd drop the guy, give the guy like a you know a quick five or from now on, just just on the off chance that wouldn't happen. But you and will I think... not you will not tip anyway, right? You say that I'm being serious. This does not motivate you in the least. <laughs> I, you know what? I think I know this chef too. I think I know who who Greg is talking about, and there's a good chance the kid has. You know, hepatitis A through D. <laughs> yeah, well, this guy was a major smackhead, you know. Had no teeth. Well, let's just say, I don't know the guy. I'm sure he's not a smackhead. I'm sure he gets no hepatitis. And we don't even know where he works. Yeah, no, we're, I'm saying I assume it's this guy who it might or may not be. We don't want to know. We don't know who this is. Yeah. Right. Hey, Greg, Greg Geraldo, what are you playing, man? You want to do a plug? You got a free DVD or anything? Uh, yeah, I got a, I got a DVD. It's uh, 60 bucks. And Extra if you want me to. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, guys. Take care. I, I, didn't, even, I didn't even have the balls to pull that move with designing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that is very pompous, Gilbert? Yes. To, to Ten extra dollars for your signature. <laughs> Someone Who, gave me that idea. I thought, ah, what the hell? When somebody said it to you, did you say, listen? I can't rip off my fan. So who was it, Joe DiMaggio? Yeah, I mean. Did you say to yourself, yeah, what kind of guys ask for money for their signature? Yeah. Did you even question it? I heard, like, uh, Paulie Shaw signs autographed pictures. All right, but so, you do a signing. Yes. But, but still, I mean, uh, maybe maybe not go for every dime yes. on the planet. <laughs> No, but you know what? It's your first DVD. Again, I mean, but what it's I'll not like it's not like you have Carrot Top's career that yes, you can go around charging that kind of money. What I'll do is I'll do a signing, and if they buy it for the regular price, I'm stunned. So I'll just sign it for free. <laughs> <laughs> I sign it for no extra money. Do you want to tell us what's on this DVD, or do you think it's better to keep it a mystery? <laughs> I bet it's funny. I haven't you, seen it, but I bet it's funny. Did, in, in true keeping to Gilbert's yes, yes. form, did you cheap out incredibly when you filmed this and only shot one night, no matter what happened? Or did, you, did you shoot over multiple shows and edit that together? Yeah, and how big was the crew? I yeah. went into a little uh, photo booth at Woolworth. <laughs> no, honestly. Oh, Howard, spend... I wish I had this on. I should have taped some of the phone conversations. He picked my brain about every <laughs> single uh, aspect of it. Who, who, took the, who took the video? Right, and, it's like, can you do it with one camera? Plus, what did you pay these guys? Yeah, I, yeah. I had, I had a video company on the... See, see, the way you got to go about it is uh, you get the company and then they film it. They, uh, you know, they film like one, maybe two shows so that you can put the, the two of those together. And, uh, and then you got to, you know, you start it around. Ah, uh, to a distributor. Ah, uh, you know, you don't go to the first one. You know? Does it activate you that Artie, who is really a longshoreman? 
is, is having the career. It really aggravates it, me. It kills me. It when you have the phone and you're asking Artie how to put together a DVD, do you feel disgraced? I, I'm like punching my fist through the wall. Really like, right. well, as, as he's asking my advice, I'm giving to him. I'm at home going, he really must kill it. Because I remember listening to him on this show. I went to go see him when I was a teenager to stand up. Yeah. Well, Gilbert has stagnated completely in his career. <laughs> You it. Something went wrong. Yeah, yeah. He has a lot of talent. He's just not motivated. <laughs> so, Gilbert, this is a big, exciting day for you. The announcement oh, of your new DVD called <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried's Dirty Jokes. So this is not your typical act. This is you doing dirty jokes. Yes. Right. Are, the, are some of these are the dirty jokes that you did on stage? When they were nice enough to bring you out before the go-go's. A, oh, yes. a young audience filled with teenage girls, and you used the C word for a woman's vagina. Is that joke yes. included? It is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I know that was a shining moment. Yeah, her manager came up to me before the show at Long... Uh, where was that? Long, Long Beach. Long, Long Beach. Beach, yes. And said that uh, there's a lot of little girls with their mothers in the audience. Oh, no. So, so just make sure. To, uh, you know, I know you usually work clean. And that just, I felt like, oh, what the hell? Well, this is an exciting day. Yes. You don't get an opportunity like that ever. Though. Yeah, yes, Gary. Uh -oh. this, this, no, this is about you, Gilbert, actually. This, so there's some interesting things going on. So, you know, David Lee was on earlier this morning. Yes. And they announced that he's the guy. And so that's interesting for the company. But there's a bunch of people that work here that do all resigned well do all music shows and that's sort of how they figured out that they're not going to be working here yeah, where's julie well one of them is you remember jake jake uh jake vogel used to do um a show on mtv and he worked here years ago <laughs> yeah. he does a show on weekends and he like came on down here he's not angry but he's sort of upset like almost like just wow like visibly well because it, that he sort of knows he's out of work now yeah that's what found out. i mean it's a weird way for the for, you see this is what i said i said that the company should tell people what's going on that there's a lot of people whose jobs are on the line. and so they didn't call these people in and tell no, them. no. no in fact, in fact, i i was the one who broke the story to them this morning so jake wanted uh, to come in and just sort of express that he thinks it's disappointing that... I would like to speak to Jake, and Jake has every right to say something now. Excuse and... us, Gilbert. We'll oh, get back okay. to the yes. DVD in a moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, Gilbert, why does everything have to be about you and your dumb DVD? <laughs> Go to GilbertGodfried.com for that. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Now? <laughs> hey, Gilbert. Jake? Hi, Robin. Uh, Jake, it's awful. Uh, you, wh when is your show on? Um, I've actually been doing uh, a lot of 10 to 2s, like uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Schedule's a little bit all over the place, but... Uh, I see your T-shirt says you're fired. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought, you know, I, I, I was on till 2 tonight, so I just threw on clothes, but this seemed appropriate. Did anyone in the company come to you and say, listen, we're, we're going to an all-talk format. David Lee Roth is taking over. You don't have a job anymore. It was all rumors, you know. We we had speculation, but no, the first that I'm, I'm hearing about this is uh, I get a text message jolting me out of bed saying, turn on Howard Stern. And, yeah. and this is the first that uh, I've heard of it. And what happens to the program director of this station? Is he out, too, or is he well, going to program the uh, talk thing? I don't know, but Rob has been in incredibly great to me. Right. And Tom's been great to me. You right. know? Yeah, right up until this moment. <laughs> Tom's, Tom's great to you until he doesn't need you anymore. Well, I, I just, you know, I, I love doing this work. And I have a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous respect for the, the fact that I, I, I've been here and... I, I just didn't know what else to do. I just thought, like, well, if it's over, I just at least want to be in the building. The company had a right to come to everyone who works here and inform them no, first. No, Tom, I'm sorry. I did, I did, this is not like an ambush or anything. I didn't mean well, to. So, I, so Tom's not taking it that way. Tom, believe me, Tom's as ambushed as you are. I hate to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think Tom has been ambushed. Believe me. Right. But... Um, Actually, Tom is fired, too. Don't feel too <laughs> He's going with you. Will you walk out with this staff... Uh, Especially the guys who are losing their shows, and will you walk out in solidarity with them, Tom? No. You will not. Okay. <laughs> Good. I just want to make sure you're still hey, the same. A man alone. <laughs> he's an island. Yeah. What uh, What do you have to say to the people who learned this morning for the first time that they're all going to be fired? Um, they're not necessarily all going to be fired. There's don't no lie. No, I'm looking at you square in the eye. Is he fired or not? Don't know. Of course he is. What do you no. mean you don't? What are you going to do with him? He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a music guy. No, because there, there was going to be music on the radio station on weekends and uh, starting on Friday night, and there's going to be some shifts around for. Julie a Slater day. here or gone? I'm not sure. Not on a full. Will not be here on a full time basis. That I can say. Wow. Wow. Booker, I would assume, is safe. He's doing some talk. 
Uh, I hope book is going to be safe. Yes, but there's not. I'm, there's no guarantee. Not, it, Rob, yeah. I will say this. Rob has given me the the benefit of doing some mm -hmm. talk on the station. I you know I have been doing some of that, but no, like my main job is to you know play right. play the hits. And he loves the music. And, I mean, he 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 as much as anybody here loves the music. He's into the music and. Uh, um, Some of it's okay. <laughs> is it possible there'll be another music format that these guys should go to? Maybe go work somewhere else within the chain? Someone will help place them? Um, Gilbert's very upset. He's what shocked. <laughs> Gilbert only cares about Gilbert himself. Gilbert my pilot when I was a kid. I don't know if you remember sitting in bed with a young boy. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 That, the pilot that's how I board. got the job. Yes. <laughs> what about uh, Tom on the new format? Maybe a job for Gilbert? Couldn't he certainly entertain an audience He's with his a talk. new DVD? He can talk up a song. Oh, Gilbert is very entertaining. I've yes. always said that about Gilbert. Maybe you could find a slot for him. <laughs> the only comedian ever booked in my life. Right. Um, so, this is very upsetting to me that it was handled and bungled this way. Um, I mean, like. As you should know something about public disclosure and you know and uh, publicly traded companies, so just as you, Do you really think that uh, telling the staff uh, on a certain given day that uh, the, they're changing format uh, that that be that would really when it's when it's as company when it, when it's as big an announcement and there's so many stations involved really. Uh, um, I don't think it's that big an announcement. Just as you did. I mean, well, you, I'm a little bit bigger to the industry yeah. than David but Lee Roth, with all due respect. Station, the yeah. station is very big to okay. the industry. All right. Okay. And as is YSP and a whole bunch of other stations. Well, Gilbert, this would be a good time for you to plug your DVD. Because <laughs> 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 you're tearing up the airways. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that uh, Gilbert's steak was ruined by yes, uh, balls and yeah, ass? Yes, I did. I heard all that. <laughs> I had to shock I everyone. I wanted it was actually that, improved by balls and ass. Let me say something something to you the company doesn't really care that much about you i know that's why i wanted to come up to and i face. am very sorry for you because i'm a fellow performer that if i tuned on the radio and i this has happened to me it's what happened to me in detroit turn on someone called me said turn on the radio and i learned my job was done they switched to country and because uh, i had to surprise everyone right and you know what it is to lose your job it's pretty frightening if tom got surprised he'd be upset and I'd be upset. I was upset when I was in that position, and I, my heart aches for you. This is a terrible way for you to be uh, told about this, Thank and I'm you. sorry. Thank you. I really uh, appreciate that. Uh, there's no empathy here from uh, this company, only from me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what? What, what empathy does the company have? Uh, they are only thinking about themselves. That's right. The K-Rock Christmas party that is held in January. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll, uh, so February. you won't be able to go. It will be very depressing this year. Yeah. I'm sorry, Phil. Uh, but really, really, our honestly. Our Halloween concert, you know. Yeah, well, all joking aside, yeah. I'm very upset for you. Seriously. Thank you. It's not right and it's not fair. So, uh, to, uh, This is how Tom, things are done. Tom, you have to uh, put together a whole new on-air staff? You're not even letting Tom get near this. Really? Oh, you know, yeah. I, I am involved. You are involved? Sure. Yeah. You look so shocked. <laughs> I'm not shocked. I, all right. I know all about the plan, but yes. All right. Yes. Oh, the plan is really coming together, and I congratulate you on it. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's fantastic. What a mess. Well. Oh. And I have a tremendous loyalty to you, Tom. I really do. I mean, you've been so supportive to me for years. So uh, I, I, I except for now. It's, <laughs> it's all a sham with Tom. But Can I say something? A nice moment for Can I say something about Tom? <laughs> My job. <laughs> Two weeks after you're gone, he'll forget completely about it. He's gonna have that Christmas party with a whole new crew of strangers. Out with the and old. Be perfectly happy. And with the new. Out with the new. How's Julie Slater? She's one of my favorites. Yeah. So I hope she's there. I hope she's going to be okay. Julie's been here for, here for ten years. Yeah. Well, it's a shame. Where is she? Is she around? Yeah. She's around. Yeah, she gets, we should uh, have her really coming good. too. She just heard. I don't know if you've seen Julie lately. She's looking really good. It's a good thing because she's probably going to have to. She's probably going to have to be naked at scores. Yeah, no. <laughs> she's really good. Have to dance for her. <laughs> she knew to get in shape. <laughs> she said, "I better look hot so I get lots of tips when I'm dancing nude." Ever noticed that about Julie? Right. She is looking. But she is terrific. I bet you she's too broken up to walk in Where here. Where is she? I'm going to be honest. Julie. I saw her earlier. She wasn't. <clears throat> I know tears. Hi. This is Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's great. Well, you sound like uh, Howard Stern. If I was her, I'd have sex with David Lee Roth. Uh, there's Julie. Julie, you are looking good. Is Tom it? is right. Very emotional. I know. Oh, oh, come back here. Get on that microphone and show us some Oh, she's crying. That's a shame. It, how long you been? How long? She looks fine, Tom. Hey, hey, Julie, how long have you been with the uh, station? Nine years. Okay. 
and and uh, the station it feels like home to you, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> please, Tom, we don't ruin Julie's moment. <laughs> Julie, the station's family to you, right? I've been here a long time. Right? Yeah. When did you start? Nine years ago. Nine years right ago. Right after they flipped to. Uh... New Rock. Yeah. I think you've developed a real closeness with your audience. I think that people have come to know you and love you. And uh, what's it feel like to be leaving? Um, it's just very sad. Well, how did you and find out? Did it hurt? You know what's hysterical? I was listening this morning, and I still didn't understand because it was everyone just said, "Hey, Tom, is it going all talk?" And he goes, "Yeah." And then you guys talked about something else. I'm like, "That's not big news. <laughs> Nobody cares. They're all getting fired." I did. I I honestly. There was a lot of information to absorb. Yeah. Right. And the first person I thought of was you because you follow us and I know uh, how important you are. And I think you're one of the nicest people. I think you deserve better than what you got this morning. I think you should have been told ahead of time. It would have been I do. Nice. It would have been nice. And I think... Uh, I think yeah, this... what a way to find out. Yeah. Are you angry? Are you angry? What is that, Tom? <laughs> what, 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 what's funny about a woman losing her job? <laughs> He's laughing. You're going to sit there and laugh. What's, what's funny is how you two are trying to manipulate. I'm not manipulating anything. I like Julie a lot, and she knows it. We email each other. Tom's choosing to make a joke out of your future. I know how much you care about the, the radio. I know how much you care about music. I know how much energy you've put into this company. Every day. I want, every day, I every want to day. thank you for years of service, even if Tom thank can't you. be man enough to, to, to thank you right now. And if he's going to sit and laugh at you, I'm not going to laugh. You know look, what? I've look lost at my how job. emotional she is. And Tom says, oh, I saw her earlier. She's fine. She's not fine, Tom. I know she's. I mean, I, I don't expect her to be feeling perfectly well. I'm sorry. She lost her job. All I can say is how could she I'm be... very talented. I will bounce back. Absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm just okay. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're not quite positive you'll bounce back. Yeah, he doesn't oh. know if he's gonna bounce. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I was sick of all the rumors. Like the engineers knew more than I knew. Really? It's like you're kidding me. What is going to become of Julie? Uh, when will you? When, when is her last you payday? Boom. When when will she stop earning an income? <laughs> When are you going to rip the rug out yeah. from under her? Tom, when I find I out, please. Have, she wants the answer. No, I, I, and I don't have an answer. Yes, you do. Oh. No, I don't. It, 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 when will her family begin to starve? <laughs> you know what Tom is saying? He, he says he doesn't care. to use her as care. long as he needs to use her, and she doesn't here. have any and I, and opportunity to plan for her future. Nice relationship with everybody. I'm very sorry for you, Julie. I'm, I'm hey, Julie. Awesome. Yes. She's I, I think Julie's great, man. I hope she does well, and I'd like to know where she's going, and I hope she stays in the New York area, man. Well, she got the news this morning. Uh, her The rug was ripped out from underneath her this morning, oh. and uh, really she had no time to prepare, and now the reaction is honest. I, I understand and, it. And she's supposed to go yeah. in the air in a few minutes, and yeah. she's in tears. So there's no Julie show after this. That's right. No, I think there is a show today. Today, today yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a day-to-day -day thing. Anthony, you're on the air. Survive Anthony, you're on the air. Hey, I, I wanted to talk to Julie. Uh, this really sucks. I listen to her. I listen to Booker. I listen to you guys early in the morning. I got a headset, and I use it at work all day long. And I don't know what, what the hell to do anymore. It's like the show is great all, you know, throughout the day. Sucks that people are losing their jobs. It <laughs> definitely does. And I've been the victim like, of Julie's this. Julie's great. And, uh, Thank you. I want to go over to Sirius. I hope they either come with you or... Uh, you know, I might, the, uh, take, I might take one of my channels and make it music just to, to house these people. You know what? It's funny. Uh, you know what else I wanted to ask you? Is there any and when I that... fire you, I'll give you lots of notice. <laughs> Thank you. But Tom always said he was so committed to the music. No. What happened to he, the music? He was never committed to the music. <laughs> it was all a lie. That was last week. That was last week. <laughs> that was last week. Out with the old guard. In with Penn. <laughs> I'm with Penn. Penn. Penn, man. man. I love it when he barks on the air. It's terrific. You know, Penn is getting his own show, Gilbert. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 Well, Julie, listen, listen, guys, I want to say something. I honestly, I know there's a lot of jokes and stuff. I, I feel your pain. It's happened to me, and it sucks. And I never understood why people can't be upfront and honest and tell you what is going to happen in your future. The company owes that to you. You've been here nine years. You were owed an explanation. 
Tom. You still owe her a cutoff date. Julie, would you like to say, yeah, give her a cutoff date, Tom. Let her prepare. Give, him, yeah. give the girl some closure right now. I want you to come but clean. What if, but what You've been in on the planning. No, what if it extends beyond the end of this year? You know whether it does, does no, it or not? I, I, no, I don't know specifically yet if um, if the music on the weekends is going to be something. Well, how many people can do music on the weekends? Yeah, how she supposed to? You need some. So she's going to work one day a week? Two. Two. You can't Three? live on that in New York City. I, I'm, I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's the best case scenario. I'm just saying it's. It may, it may be the best case scenario here. Just give a day. When will her medical insurance run out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Is Teller also getting a show? Don't get that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's the one I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. Julie, I, I want to offer you a chance to say goodbye to your audience right Merry now. Christmas. No, no, why not? She doesn't do it now. She's why not? She's not going to get a chance. She, she's not even allowed to yeah, talk on her own show. Yeah, one day you're just going to tell her she what doesn't need to come in again. Show. Julie, please. Fans, I love you, and I will be returning. Please follow me. It's been a great ride, but it's not over yet. Thank you. There you go. That was done with dignity. Howard. That's all. That's all. Now here's Penn. <laughs> 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 can I say something? If you do have trouble buying your family Christmas gifts, can I help you? No gifts. There's no gifts this year. That's my family's listening. No gifts. Say goodbye oh, to your audience. Hole in that stocking. Um, Let me give you advice. Yeah. This year, don't tip. Right. <laughs> Get ready for lots of ass steak. I never go back to the same restaurant twice. Right. Uh, I have, I've just had so much fun uh, on on this radio station. I've been at K-Rock uh, on and off since I was 16 years old. Yeah. And, uh, and it's been great. And I, I, I will miss it. I miss it doing this. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I love radio so much. Well, this call, is... call Artie for career advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing you got to do. Don't ruin the guy's yeah, moment. I'm sorry. This is his chance to say goodbye. Uh, you know, the, the best that I can look forward to this week is, you know, counting how many times Booker makes sarcastic comments on VH1's I Love the 80s as opposed to me. I mean, that's... Uh, my life just entered the toilet. You know? Right. And and that's why I'm not laughing at you. Yeah. I, despite Tom's laughter, I'm tuning that out. He's I the will only not, one who finds this funny. I've been in your position. He hasn't. <laughs> I know what it is. Because I've devoted myself to radio stations. I moved halfway across the country for radio stations, and then they fire me in the middle of the night. I'm thinking about it. I know exactly. I've never been fired before in radio. Yeah, well. I've had a lucky career. <laughs> I, I've only worked here, you know. And it's very upsetting when people are laughing while you're being fired. I am not laughing. Well, there was a lot of laughter I heard from you, and I'm very upset with you right now. I'm very hurt. I'm trying to stop my laughing now, but Fred won't let me. Yes, Kevin. I hear you laughing. Hey, guys. Uh, first time, long time, and now last time. What are you guys doing? Like, what is K-Rock doing? They're ruining everything. Well, I'm not going to go along. I'm not going to say anything. I'm out of... K-Talk now. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm thinking? Yes. All those logos that Tom created for K-Rock, oh, is he now... Part. Those are being donated to the Museum of Broadcasting. <laughs> it was so brilliant. Great talk, period. James, <laughs> go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, Drew, I'd like to offer you a quick way to make an easy play. No, 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 no. Guy yes. claims that the uh, golden parachute. Guy <laughs> claims you have employment uh, possibilities. Uh, <laughs> yes, Alan. Still young at first. Hey, Julie, I'm a big fan of yours. I don't understand what's going on. What Where do I? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were like a, a rock station, a classic rock station. Then you're like a popular rock station. Now you're changing the talk. I don't get it. It's all Howard's fault. No, it's not my fault. There's no reason the music had to go away. Ben Harvey, you're on the air. Hey there, guys. Let me tell you about me, Tom, because you, I don't like that comment. I am creating a new universe where lots of broadcasters are going to have jobs. Let me tell you something. These people, these two people are my people because broadcasters will now have employment, thanks to me, in a whole new place. They'll have alternative places to go. And I've created When you're free done radio. with them. And what did you create, Tom? Free radio. Now Julie Slater is free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the people who got freedom. Ben Harvey. Free at last. Free at last. I wanted to say. <laughs> ben Harvey is a disc jockey. Yes. I don't I don't even think we're gonna get severance because uh What? Because Bill? our our How current contract with Aptra is over. Ben Ben Harvey brings up a point. Will Will oh, Julie get severance? Ben, it, it, Anybody who is severed will receive severance. And what does that mean? That sounds like double speak. No, no, it means if you fi if if there's no job, if you're let go, there is a severance. We had that contract still uh -oh. applies. That Wait doesn't a sound good either. Because if you keep her on two days a week, right. that's yeah. it. I can't it's all a boy. I don't. 
you know what? I don't know, Julie. It's a, it's a good question, and it was something if if you stay part time, we'd have to talk about. Oh my God! To figure out what the what the right answer is. Man, are why are you sighing? Amazing. Tell me what's on your mind. I I don't uh, have a contract, you know. Here you will uh, get no ha- seven. I have you know the standard right, capture protect- agreement, right. and um, that's the contract I'm talking about. Right, I, uh, but and, and even that is expired. And let, if I may just say, that contract, it, it's the, uh, most of the terms and conditions of that contract are still in effect. We are still, we're still abiding by that contract. Well, it sounds to me like um, you will not be getting severance. Right. He's going to give you no, one. No, I just said. I just That's said not what you said. That. You're saying if we're offered part-time, though, we wouldn't get severance. And that's not fair. No, I, and, and this what I said. So what speak I up. Go ahead. I even believe was. Was. Speak up. Well, I, I just, as, as I understood it, that when we launched K-Rock 2, the Internet station, uh, there were certain aspects of the after contract that weren't worked out because, you know, they have no way to figure out how to pay DJs for Internet radio. Right. There's That's, no jurisdiction. There's no jurisdiction for after. So that was right. kind of left up in the air. And well, I it's not heard... up in the air. There's no jurisdiction. That's not up in the air. Uh, okay. I, that means not, he can do, do no anything he that. wants. Right. right. But no what is the bottom line, you're saying? Yeah. Like, what, do we, when do we have to leave? And uh... Yeah. What happens to the Internet portion? Uh, These people are upset. to his thing. Tom, we need some answers on this. Now. I understand. But here, Who is getting severance? Here. I'm not giving the answers here. Yes, you are. That, that's <laughs> it that. almost sounds like it would be better for you to be uh, fired for a while. Don't bother me with severance. I am a five palm tree. These people, <laughs> these people are afraid of you right now. I am not. I'm going to ask you point blank. I'm not afraid of me. Julie's, Julie Slater's severance. How much does she get if she... Is fired. If she is fired, her severance is covered by the collective bargaining. After working nine years, what does that mean? How much severance does she get? I, I, mean, I have to go back and calculate it. I don't know what the number is. Twenty weeks, something like that. And if she is part time, she will have to forego her severance. Isn't that how you're going to get around it? I'm not true. trying to get around anything. But isn't that true? I wouldn't be fired. Because she's not my fired. Answer is, my answer is I am not sure. You want my advice? Take the severance. I would. Yeah. Don't get suckered. And then when they fire you, they're going to say, "No, you only work two days a week. You get no severance." Right. No, that's. I know this. I I know this company. You can't do it. Yeah, it'll be done. I'll try and figure a way, but you can't. Howard, you know what's interesting? If you walk through the building right now, every radio at every desk is cranked up because there's more information than anyone's ever got. Well, you know, I'm, we're talking to the guy who just uh, took back some of the commission from the salespeople. <laughs> that's right. You got to know who you're right, dealing you know with. What? May, can, can I tell you something about yes, that? Yes, Tom. That. Um, the commission structure was reinstituted. Good. Months ago, a month ago. Thank you. So why are you taking all our crap for a whole month? Because I didn't want to turn it into a. Uh, I got action. Chair. No, I exactly. told Tom it was wrong. Howard on your side. <laughs> you're damn you're right, Howard on your side. What do you mean and I had nothing to do with it? And if it was Howard on your side, then I would have come to you the day we I made the announcement, which was a long time, which was about a month ago. And and told you. I didn't tell you until now because there was no reason for you to know. This just in your office is on fire. You better get back to it. <laughs> Julie, I, I'm watching over there. You're pretty emotional right now. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, this is this is a real. It's really good. No, this is stop oh, it, Tom. Up. This is a real. <laughs> This is a real situation. I know. This is a person in pain. You're trying Why to do you have to cry. trivialize it? I'm not trying to get her to cry. She was crying. I was crying in a cab on the way up here. He was, Howard. I'm not kidding. When cry, Coco, cry. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, Julie, can I ask you a question? I know you're emotional right now. What's going through your mind? I want to talk to you about this. What's going on right now? I'm just wondering what I'm going to do. I don't know. You know you're what's scared? Going on? I mean, I'm scared, but I am also, you know, I believe in myself. But it's just yeah. a... You know, I've been here for so long, it's just a big, like, wow. In nine years, what is your greatest memory of this place? What was your favorite moment? Um, me- meeting some of my musical heroes. I got to hang out with Tom York from Radiohead in the south of France. I guess that won't exist anymore, will it? <laughs> oh, sure, in some other place. Well, I don't feel like this is the end of my life, that's for sure. But... I guess it's just hard to break up with a family. People yeah. you, you thought you could trust. Yeah, when you look at Tom now and think of a guy who's been smiling at you for nine years and telling you, "Hey, you're part of our team." You know who's the most emo- on the street. You know who's the most emotional right now, Gilbert, because he lost all his plugs. And now we have to rush. And now we have to do a commercial break and then rush through the rest of the show. And he's not going to get a good plug. What a day to pick, Gilbert. He picked the worst day. 
with the money you're you're not making, do you can you take a few of it and buy Gilbert Gottfried dirty <laughs> jokes on gilbertgottfried.com? Yeah, every, I'm every broke, broke. I'll buy the DVD and I think I'm going to go buy a, a radio. And by the way, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Welcome to our new home. Uh, no severance for you. <laughs> what is it, Kathy? Hi. Yes. Hi, I just wanted to tell you, I was going to get my at uh, radio, but I was still going to listen to K-Rock when you weren't on. Tell Tom, it's pouring rain, my head's about to explode. I'm going to get my serious radio now because of this crappy attitude. Well, what? listen, I don't want, please don't say that. I mean, I, <laughs> it's not the only way you can get his if Tom, You know what, if Tom is driving you right now to get your radios, I will, yes, he is. So my whole family, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. Well, I can't stop you from doing that. Welcome Thank you. to the radio holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> thank anyway, you. Thank you. For, tell Julie I'm sorry and, and everyone else. And thank you for for not laughing at Julie like Tom did. Thank you. Uh, I don't uh, think that was funny uh, at all. Booker doesn't so, know what to do. Tell everyone I'm sorry. And I tell Tom I used to feel sorry for him and he used to pick on him. But now, oh. I hope when he gets fired from K-Rock, go and give him a job, Howard. Kathy, I'm right here, so I got your message. I'm sorry. It's not right. You have to, oh, oh, all right, I have to go because my head's going to explode. Goodbye. Thank you. Yes, Ralph. Everybody calm down. Don't worry. Everybody's going to end up at Sirius. That's the place to be. Well, hey. Right. Tom is just driving that. people away at this point. Tom is doing his job. He is a company man. Yeah, I, I don't think Tom's making these decisions. Let me but tell you something. I want to defend Tom for a yeah, second here. I'm a victim and all that. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you why, what's going on here. You know, during Robin, during the slave days. Yes. <laughs> There were field Negroes and house Negroes. And Tom is. Tom is a house Negro. He just he just wants to work near his master. I he loves his master. George. I saw my master and I broke free of the chains. A lot of times the master was the father. He is no. He is in the same position that house Negro was of having to sit there and take all of this. And, and, I, and that's my defense. He feels better now. With and this. I mean it. And and I mean can it. I eat that piece of bread that you ate and finish in my hand? I'm not going to get I had to rub it on my ass. Yes. <laughs> he sometimes had to be mad and bad, too. The field Negroes. Rob, the DJ. Hold it, Robin. I have to interrupt. What? There's a gentleman standing here. His name is Rob Cross. He's the program director the of... President. What, of what the about the death of the music station you well, put together, Rob? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I guess the death is still almost three months away. Uh, but, you know, what are you going to do? I guess It's terminal. It's terminal. When Michael Jordan left, if the Bulls could have changed their name and the sport they played, they would have. So. Well, are they going to let you program the talk, or are you out of here? Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Rob's got a beating in serious, too, I think. I subway for a while. But I didn't hear you. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have headphones. When last I left, I've been on the subway for a while. David Lee Roth was in here. I didn't know, you know. Did you know that that was all going down today, or were you uh, in the yeah, dark? Yeah, I knew. I knew it was going to go down today, but I, you know, I thought we had we're music for two more months, so. Right. And we are. So Rob's out of here too, I guess. Maybe. Is that right? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, well, wait a second. So it's not going to be talk. When's it going to be? It talk? is talk. It's going to be talk January third, Ralph. It'll be talk all day and probably at night and weekends. It'll so it's just going to be depressing for the next Tom, three months. Tom, can I ask you a question? Yeah, I can ask you, before you ask me, yeah. can I ask you? Yes. Why do you keep taking Ralph's phone calls? I don't know. I'm not going anymore. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> now that's an intelligent comment. I'm, I'll, I'll respect it. <laughs> Tom, you've had a great career here. Yeah. It's, it's it hurt you and pain you at, at, at this point that the, now you've had to take back the salespeople's commissions. You've had to tell all these people they're gone over the radio. Um... Is this the way you have you Rob move across the country? Rob moved across the country. Uh, his wife's he, pregnant, and his wife oh is pregnant. My Rob, oh, your it wife gets sadder. It gets sadder than that, and doesn't Rob it? Is what about the best boss I've ever had? Uh, what about uh, Mike Veer? Mike Veer, forget about it. He's he's, he's gonna be gone. homeless. He's gonna eat and jump <laughs> off up here for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> how, how soon can all of you clear out your offices? Tom needs uh, David Lee Roth needs more space. <laughs> Tom, this isn't what you want, is it? Listen, this, this is upsetting. It is, it is never. I mean, I've been through this a couple of times before. What does this mean to the engineering staff? We're safe. Uh, more work. More work. Nothing. No, more work, probably. Right. Really? Pen, yeah. Pen's fingernail red. Kevin, <laughs> uh, oh. Kevin, who is a K-Rock DJ, is on the air. Hey, hey, hey what's up, Howard? Hey, brother. Uh, I just want to say, you know, Rob's a good guy. I love him because I was in Syracuse uh, competing with Rhino before I came to K-Rock. Right. But now I may have to go back there, which sucks. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know if we're going to have the, the softball. we got a softball game next week. I, I need, I need uh, Julie to grab my headphones for me out of the locker. Well, come with me. Will there be no alternative music voice in New York? Is that what we're saying? Oh, there's lots of alternative music. Take in some place we're going. Buy an iPod. Buy an iPod. You want alternative? Did I mention streaming at K2? Well, hey, good luck with that. <laughs> Rob, I'm sure that there is, there's places where you're needed. guy like you. Yeah, well, hey, probably. He certainly I mean, doesn't want to stay around here to program the Internet. Right. If you're lucky, you get to program the Internet. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for all of your years of hard work. It's been a pleasure uh, passing in the halls. I know we don't get to hang out much, but it's, uh, I, I, I took a lot of pleasure into being the talk show on an alternative rock station. And this is a damn good sounding station, and you've done a great job. And you're being abandoned now, and I don't think it's great, but what can I tell you? Uh, well, I'm, you know, for every, I, I don't want to speak for everybody else around here, but I think, you know, having your show in this building is... Uh, I, it's such a cool experience, you know. I mean, yeah. There's a there's a there's always like a, there's, a, there's always a circus going on in the morning, either downstairs or when you walk in, and it's a really interesting thing to be around. And I've only been here for two and a half years, but you know, I'm glad I got to at least be a teeny tiny part of it. And I'm a little offended that David Lee Roth got the job because I thought Cross and Lopez killed. Yeah, they did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have done it. I'll go on record saying I would have done it for a quarter of what David Lee Roth is doing, yeah. and, and more markets. There you go. Can I just tell you really quickly, by the way, for me, Rob's most memorable moment ever on our radio show was. When he fired stuttering John Locke. That's there. true. That's that was true. good. That was good. I'm feeling a little deja vu here. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuttering John finally gets his revenge. Yeah. That's right. All right, look, we could uh, talk about this a whole morning. In fact, I invite you in tomorrow morning to continue this type of conversation. Yeah, this is going to take a little while to sink in, I yes, think. This is all good. This is all good that you're getting it out on the air because, believe me, you'll get no other opportunity. Yeah, otherwise you'll never get any say at all. I'm, I'm the only one that allows this. Speaking of free, looking for work, Julie Slater, contact me here at the station. Right. What's your email? Um, you, I don't know if I want to give any. <laughs> <laughs> well, right here at K-Rock. Here. I don't, e I don't right, even have one Julie's here. email. Right. <laughs> right here at So far, Julie at krockradio.com is working. Yeah. But yeah. Who and knows for how long? <laughs> well, your email's been confiscated. You'll have no doubt. Oh, jeez. Right. We needed it for pen. Now, Gilbert, I want to thank you for coming in today. Yes. <laughs> All right, the last ten minutes you didn't get to talk, but you understand these people are upset. Yes. <laughs> no, he doesn't understand it either. <laughs> yeah, he's upset. He's a, angry. got very he's little angry. empathy. Thank you, everyone. I, I I don't know what else to say. We'll talk about this again tomorrow. I hope. That's the key. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you. you I want to thank Gilbert Gottfried. I'm going to let Gilbert go. <laughs> yeah, we're leaving too. Yeah, I had enough of him. <laughs> Gilbert, come back. And get, you can come back as many times as you want and and, and promote your DVD. Oh, and, okay. You know that. Uh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I had, Artie Lang is his. <laughs> I mean. Uh, and not only is Artie Lang your business advisor, but you've been eating <laughs> tremendous amounts of ass and ball steak. <laughs> so the first thing you should do is uh, you get like, uh, you find a venue uh, where, where you can record it. And once you find a venue, uh, then, you know, that, that's how you make the whole thing around that. And you can advertise that. That you're recording the DVD. Did he say amortize? Amortize. Oh, wow. They recorded the DVD. He, he wanted to know it. He, like, he to be like, he goes, so did, did, did you have cameras? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, what did that cost? <laughs> so how much did you shell out on this? Well, you got to pay for the cameras. Yeah, right. Did it cost you a lot of money to make your DVD? I, I Much more than I ever thought. About 100 grand? Yeah, I, it, I don't know. It just kept costing. It, it does. It's just cost it creep up like crazy. All right, look. Gilbert's a brilliant comedian. <laughs> I'm sure the Don't DVD's laugh. good. You, you want my DVD's recommendation? Fine. Get the autograph one. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried's Dirty Jokes, available in December, to pre-order. To pre-order, because you want to get there first. Because you don't want to be late. Because yes. Gilbert doesn't actually want to shell out his own money. He wants you to shell it out, and then he won't have to withdraw it out of his You don't want to have to wait online. He's not pressing it until he sees your cash. Right. Smart man. It's Gilbert Gottfried. Dot com, everybody. <laughs> and you're going to be entertained on that website. Yes. And order as many DVDs. Christmas presents, oh, great. Yes. great. Stocking stuff. Hanukkah. Hanukkah, yes. everything. Martin Luther King's birthday. Right. It's... <laughs> and if you don't feel like, go to artie-lang.com and I'll just tell you all about it. <laughs> and real quick, before, I, I know this is, uh, just let me do this. Hey, Nick, Nick Carter yeah. is a legendary disc jockey at WBCN. What do you want to say, Nick? 
Uh, I just want to say uh, I just moved here from Boston Monday. That was a mistake. <laughs> you moved to New York? I know. Yeah. Nick, uh, Nick I, a good guy. Nick, I don't understand something. The company hired you to come here on Monday, and now they're switching formats? No, 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 no. I, you know, I, I, I just got to give big ups to Rob Cross because BCN uh, let me go in December, and Rob literally saved my career. And I've been coming down every weekend since July. And, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, what am I busting my ass in a hotel room for? I'll move down here, and here we go. But no. I just wanted to call, and I wanted to say just thanks to you, Howard, because... You know, everybody always, you know, if you try to be funny on the radio, everybody's like, oh, what are you trying to be the next Howard Stern? I just want to say thanks on behalf of all the idiot DJs who won't step up and say, you know what, Howard kicked open the door, just not even so you could be outrageous, just so you could be yourself on the air. Right. And, uh, you know. Well, thank you, Nick, for saying that. And by the way, I want to give you a Gilbert Godfrey DVD when, you, when I see you. <laughs> Can I get the autograph one? Yes. Uh, hey, Nick, yes, honestly, sir. uh, uh, thank you for saying that. That's that, that's uh, music to my ears. Thank you. All right, brother. All right, Nick Carter, everybody. Jeez, right. I'm really, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, that's all the other stations, too, all their air staff. Robin, it's, it's 10. It's now gone. This, we have to tackle this tomorrow because it's 10 16. I got to get Gilbert hustled out of here. <laughs> this is yes, like, because you got to get back to the facts. And, I, and I, actually, I actually have to leave. Uh -huh. So gotta, I want to do a little of the news that you've got. But it's devastating. This it is, is like when Magic announced he was HIV positive. There were 2,000 women around the country. <laughs> <laughs> Calling him. We're going to continue this tomorrow. I'm like, damn! Gilbert, your new DVD. No one is excited about it more than me. <laughs> It's going to be funny. Come on. Of course, it's got to be, be funny. Gilbert's on it. Gilbert is one of my favorite comedians in the whole world, and if he puts out a DVD, I recommend you buy it. That's it. And that's the truth. <laughs> what is wrong with him today? He can't take it. Actually, no one is excited about it. <laughs> Not even Gilbert. <laughs> Not even Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert thinks it was Gil a bad idea. Go to GilbertGoffrey.com and pre-order, please. <laughs> I'd hate to see you get left out. Uh, we'll, Avoid the mob. I I'll come back and say my goodbyes right after this. Robin, you do a little news. and, and we'll show. This is Diamond David Lee Roth right here, and I'm here to say that the only person who's a bigger douchebag than Eddie Van Halen is Tom Chiasano, baby. I want to take that one. All right. I have so run out of time. and There's so much excitement here. And you know who was standing by who just wanted to say a quick yeah. farewell to us is Stephen Singer, one of our sponsors in Philadelphia from Stephen Singer Jewelers. And I just want to say thanks to this guy real quick, and I know you will, He's too. He's been fantastic. Here's the deal on Stephen Singer. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. How you doing, Howard? First of all, I remember a time when we first came to this company. You um, were good enough to provide prizes because we couldn't get any. We used to go to the promotions department, the sales department, and say, look, we need to give away some prizes because people are doing things and we need incentive. We, you were the only one who stepped well, up. Gary came to me. You were giving away $50 gift certificates and tissue boxes, I think. Right. So all kinds get a little of closer to that microphone. All kinds of crap. Yeah. And uh, he came to me and said, can we get great prizes? And we did. Yep. And um, it's been a great two-decade run, and it's just been unbelievable. When I heard you on the air yesterday saying today that they were going to change the format, I said, I can't let almost 20 years go by and not tell Howard how important he was because oh. when – and talking to all the people from the show, and you know, we have a lot of interaction together. And you and I are like two ships passing in the night. You know, we've met right. a couple of times. I've done some photo shoots, but not. I never really got a chance to tell you that um, when we started, we were getting ready to go out of business. We were a tiny jeweler. We couldn't compete with all the big guys that were really advertising in a big way. And uh, everybody told me it's impossible. You, you, you know, you can't compete with these guys. They're spending this ton of money. And. I heard you, and I was hip to you in when you were on the other on NBC in the afternoons. I used to come up and listen to right. you. I was a fan, and I said, "I'm going on Howard." I mortgaged my house. Wow! I borrowed every penny that I had, and everybody said, "You're nuts!" Because you know, if you're going to go out of business, at least walk away with some change. Yeah. Right. And I said, "I believe in this guy. I think this is this is the guy that can do it. If anybody can get it done, it's Howard." So we started giving out prizes. We met Gary. We started advertising with you. And you were the only station we were on, by the way. We weren't on any other station, just you. Wow. And people would come in 30, 40, 50 weeks that I heard you on Howard. You know, the first of all, they would thank you. Thanks for getting all these broads naked with the watches and the gifts and the, you know, the jewelry and all that stuff. Right. So they said, thanks a lot, because we heard that and we got to see it on E and all that type of stuff. But um, we were a six-person firm ready to go out of business. I have 31 people. We're one of the most dominant jewelers in the United States. And i got to tell you that you know we worked hard and everything and got a little lucky, and I have some great people. But 99% of it is from you. 
boy, oh boy, that's, that's amazing. That's such an endorsement. I Thank mean, you. you'd have no idea. I mean, you know what your power is, and you know how great you are. But all over the country, wherever I go, people ask me, you know, how many stores do you have? I said, well, counting our main store, we got one. But right. you, know, you make us sound so great. Can I say something here? This is so touching to me, and I'm so glad you stopped by. I wish you'd done it earlier too. I couldn't get to you. The, you know, for me. Part of my career has always been that McDonald's, Burger King have pissed all over right. me. I mean, they scream about me, and they said we would never support Howard Stern, and it always killed me. And I said, if I can be valuable to a couple of sponsors and prove that my advertising really works, I don't need McDonald's. I don't need Burger King. We can be a powerful advertising medium. We can take a guy like you where advertising really counts. I see the buys they make this McDonald's. They waste their money like it's going out of style. I always wanted to be able to push product and do it for a guy just like you. And the fact that you mortgaged your house because you believed in me. Well, it was you know, unbelievable. When I me. saw you fighting other radio stations and going for what you're fighting here, and I said, this guy is a winner from the word go. Man, this oh, guy doesn't know how to lose. That's great. And it was just, it's just gotten better and, better and better every year. And I'm told we're one of the biggest single store sponsors still, uh, you know, for you. And, you know, for many, many years, I'm talking over a decade, you were it. That's the only advertising I did. And wow. we're crushing the competition. Steven. And the thing that I wanted to let you know is I hear you saying, well, there's five people listening to Sirius. I'm a little nothing, just a dopey jeweler. I get 50 to 100 calls, and people come in a week like, like, like you're my best friend, and say, when are you going to be on Sirius with Howard? You know, well, are let me you tell going you over something. there with Howard? You know, what's going to happen to Howard? I, you know, I love hearing you. And any, I any, unbelievable. any concern I had is now I've seen the figures and the sales. And I know people are coming with me. I'm it's, satisfied right it's now. It's going to be way, way bigger than... I'm telling you from grassroots. I'm not, tell, I'm not somebody in your industry. I'm not a media right. person or a celebrity. I'm telling you grassroots that this is going to be way bigger than you ever even imagined. It's not only the, the beginning. Thing. And let me tell you, you know, the same fight that I had that you recognized, it hasn't left. It's only intensified. Well, that spark, that's what I love. I love, you know, you're a genius. You're the best interviewer on the planet. You're Thank one you. of the funniest guys around. And somebody, to, anybody else to, to carry 20 hours a week or, or more... They don't know. And they'll do fine. Everything will be fine, and the station will go fine. But to, to walk in your shoes, it's unbelievable. But the power that you have and what you've done for the regular radio, for this medium, you're going to do times ten because you. you've only gotten that much better in the last couple of decades. Thanks, thanks. And Steven, I just can't thank you enough. Thanks a lot. I, I, I want to get a chance to get you in here. Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelry. You. you said some great stuff, and you've got great jewelry, and Let you've always been say, a great I sponsor. Let me say, I can give a personal endorsement to his yep. jewelry. One yep. of the pieces of jewelry that I wear <laughs> that gets me more compliments than anything else is a piece that he made for me. Well, I know nice. that. Thank you, guys. You're great, it's Stephen. Thank you. Jewelry, Good luck. I appreciate Thanks. everything. Thank we'll see you, you on the other side. Thank All right. You. Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelry. Robin. Yes. We that, don't have time for... No, we don't. That, that meant a lot to me. And that was a beautiful thing. Yep. Because you work hard for your sponsors. You always have. And I thought it was... It went unappreciated many times. Especially by this radio station. Ralph, I'm, I'm swearing off yeah, the phone. Yeah, yeah, no, real quick, I, I know he's gone there, but, you know, not only that, Stephen does really great work. He's done some custom stuff for me here and there. You know me, I'm a little picky. Right. And uh, he just really Why? cares. Why? don't know. He just really cares about what he does. And Thank he, you. You know, he does, he does a great job. Thanks, brother. Stephen Singer Jewelers. All right, Robin, is there anything that we really need to know? Tell the truth. Truthfully, there's a lot going on in this country, but we never hit on that. Right. So <laughs> Why should we do that? <laughs> we don't really talk about what's going on. No, we talk about us. In this horrible, horrible country we have going on. You mentioned Rosa Parks earlier today. She is dead at the age of 92. She was a very brave woman, a pioneer in the civil rights movement. And there are a few people who uh, have a few words to say about her. I would like to do that. Good. Here is uh, Martin Luther King Jr., who quite frankly, became known as a result of the movement she started because he was the 26-year-old minister who started the bus boycott and was the voice of the civil rights movement started by Rosa Parks, D1. Mrs. Rosa Parks was arrested because she refused to give up her seat for a white passenger. She was a uh, seamstress. She was coming home from work. She was sitting in the colored section of the bus when uh, too many white people were standing, she was told, along with three others, to give up her seat. They did. She refused. And the country 
was changed as a result. Brave woman, man. Back back then in the South, if you did that, man, you had to be out of your freaking mind. You get this killed. This was in Alabama. Yeah, yeah. She's a brave woman. Brave she woman. was arrested, and it led to great many protests, a whole bus strike that crippled the transit authority down there, and eventually led to the Civil Rights Act being passed in this country, and uh, the... Uh, tr bus company down there had to relent and start letting people sit wherever they wanted. Um, she left Alabama, moved to Detroit, and became a, I think, an assistant to Congressman John Conyers and worked right. for him for many years. You know, I still here's, don't ride the bus because of that. Here's the congressman, D2. For a long time, uh, people were a little bit afraid of Rosa Parks because she had created this whole new modern civil rights movement. Yeah, they were in awe of her. They didn't know how to take her, but she was an average woman, I guess. Here's the Reverend Jesse Jackson. She sat down in order that we might stand up. And paradoxically, her imprisonment opened the doors in our long trek uh, to freedom. Hmm. And more of the Reverend Jackson. That single act of courage opened the path to Dr. King's leadership. And together... Uh, they changed the course of America and, and the world history. And finally, Rosa Parks herself talking about that day on December 1st in 1955. Father wanted us to stand up, the four of us. We didn't move at the beginning, but he said, y'all make a bow on yourselves and let me have those seats. And when the other three people moved and I didn't... And that's exactly how it happened. And uh, yesterday, the president announced a new head of the um, Fed, Alan Greenspan, who's been running that department for 18 years, has decided to step down. And Ben Bernanke is the uh, president's new pick. He currently chairs the President's Council of Economic Advisors and has served as a Fed governor. And many people in the financial industry think this was a good selection and will continue the work that was pioneered by Alan Greenspan, who is considered one of the most successful heads of that uh, department in this country. And that's what's happening. All right, Robin, thanks. Uh, what a busy day. Emotional day. I'm shocked. I'm stunned. I feel terrible. I know what you mean. I'm pretty shocked, too, about Gilbert putting up his own money for a DVD. <laughs> I don't know how he, how he managed to do that. He said it was something like $20,000. He had to cough up right away. <laughs> All right. We'll see you tomorrow. GilbertGottfried.com for that.